All right, remember this screen? It was just the one we were right at, uh, which was for me just moments ago. So everything we've done has been theory. Let's move on to the practice, and we're going to test the hypothesis about a population proportion. This is the majority of then of the rest of section 10.2. So we're going to do both of those classical and probability methods at the same time in a single stat crunch screen. And again, the reason we went through all of that hassle of the theory is because there's a lot of hypothesis tests we're going to be working through um, in the rest of this year. So to have a good understanding of how they work is a great idea. Um, but we're going to do them at the same time. Um, oh, I forgot to get rid of this. Uh, here's a worksheet for you. Now, there's no worksheet uh, to distribute. Um, but I've got the two examples, uh, two examples I have on the PowerPoint for you to work through. So here's example number one. Um, in December 2001, 38% of adults with children under the age of 18 reported that their family ate dinner together seven nights a week. 38%, seven nights a week. Seven nights a week, unbelievable. Maybe during the quarantine, we can do dinner together seven nights a week, um, but not in their sports. In a recent poll, 403 out of 1,122 adults reported their family ate dinner together. Uh, assuming the, the seven nights a week, right? Has the proportion of families who eat dinner together decreased? I, I don't know. I don't even know what 403 out of 1122 is, right? Um, just, just for fun, um, I'm going to write this down over here. 403 divided by 1122. I'm going to grab my calculator. I'm sorry you don't have any of these yellow calculators unless you stole one. In that case, I want it back. 403 divided by 1122 is 359.359. 0.359. Well, you know what? 359 is less than 38. Less than enough? Or is that still about the same. Is it the same enough? That's what we're going to do. Step number one, and I've got some things highlighted so you can see what the right answers are as you go. What type of test are we using? Well, we only have one test to choose from. It's the one proportion Z test. What is the direction of the test? You have to decide if this is going to be a left tail, a right tail, or a two tail test. And because um, the researcher is wondering, has the proportion decreased, then we're looking at things on the lower side. So this is going to be a left tail test where the alternative is less than the null. So we're going to state the hypothesis, the hypotheses. The null hypothesis is, remember, is a, state, a statement of equality. The proportion equals 0.38. And our alternative hypothesis, if we find enough data to show is that the proportion is now lower than 0.38. So those are our two those are our two hypotheses. Okay? Um, all right, and you're yeah, writing these down as you go. I could write them on the board. Um, actually I think I will. We have a one prop Z test. It is left tail. The null hypothesis says the proportion is 0.38. The alternative hypothesis says, nope, it's not 0.38. It's less than 0.38. So that's how I'm keeping track of this process so far. We need to very clearly and carefully make note of our alpha, our level of significance. Alpha equals 0.05. That's what most of them have been, right? You get a 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.01. I think the only real three that we see. Uh, good. Now, we have to use that table to figure out. Remember the, the table that we were looking at? Uh, hopefully you've got that someplace handy. Maybe a little graphic on your screen. Maybe you've written it down. Uh, maybe it's right there available in your homework questions as you go, but you need to then find your critical values 
And for left tail tests, a Z of a Z score for an alpha of 0 0.05 is negative 1.645. So my critical value excuse me, is Z.05 equals negative 1.645. It would be something different, obviously, for right or two-tailed. Now, use technology. Um, can I take a quick break and show you? Oh, isn't that beautiful? Fields of fields of gray. Okay, uh, gray fields of <laughs> reeds. Uh, fields of purple is what they are actually. Here's my stack run screen and. I believe this is under stat proportion stats, a one sample, a one proportion Z test, one proportion, proportion, one sample. Um, and do I have data? No, I don't have all 1,122 surveys. I have the summary. So I click this summary right here. How many successes did I have? Looks like I had 403. How many observations were there? Well, I asked 1,122 people. I'm gonna do a hypothesis test. Looks like it was defaulted in as 0.5. That's just, that just uh, happenstance. What do I want this to be? I want it to be a left tail less than. Don't click this part right here. We'll get to that next chapter. And just for fun, I want to click the p-value plot. I'm going to compute this, and here it is. A couple of things uh, to note. You can see the 403 out of 1122. Okay, now I'm going to go. So now you see how that works. You can also click on the graph uh, right here, and you can see the way the graph looks, right? It's an ugly looking. Um... Oh, shoot. Ha! I did that wrong. It wasn't 0.5. It's supposed to be 0.38, right? How many of you are saying, Reeds, I think you're doing it wrong. And that automatically changed right there to 0.38. I was thinking back to the, um, the previous one of cell phone, right? So now I compute, um, and there's my graph. That, <laughs> that looks much better. Okay. So that's that. I'm going to go back to my slideshow now because I've got these windows blown up a little bit. So we found our uh, null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis as stated, and we can see some statistical stuff right here. The sample proportion, 0.359, like we had said earlier, and it gave us a z-score and a p-value. These are what we've been looking for. I'm going to make note of both of those. Test results. The Z is negative 1.436775, and the P value is 0 0.0754. Both of these numbers tell us the same thing. And the graph as well is going to show us the Z score and the P value as well. And you can, you can play around with those. Um, you're going to make note of both the test statistic and the P value. And then we're going to compare to determine the status of the null hypothesis. Um, here's where it, where it can potentially be a little bit confusing, but I think that you're, you're getting pretty good at this. Watch, watch me draw, watch me draw this. Here is my red zone. This is my area of 0 0.05, and what is this boundary? What is our critical value? Negative 1.645.
what did we get for a test statistic? We got negative 1.4367, whatever. How far away from zero is that? Well, it's not quite to the red zone, is it? It's to about here. Here is negative 1.4367. So, are we far enough away for this to be considered unusual? No, it's actually inside the boundary. It's, it's, it's not outside the boundary in the red zone, it's inside the normal amount. So, are, did we find evidence to suggest we reject? No, we didn't. This data we collected is well within our normal range of usual, so we don't reject it. Uh, furthermore, from the probability method, which I think is an easier way to look at it, what's the probability that we would get a result like this? About 7.5%. What's an unusual amount in this problem? 5%. Is 7% more likely than 5%? Yes. If it is, then we don't reject it because the probability was within the, uh, the, the, the realm of reasonable. So in both cases, because the boundary was within, because the probability was big enough, we have failed to reject. Um, this is sometimes true, this is sometimes true. In this particular question, we chose to fail to reject. So I'll let you pause the video and read that through if you want. Take attention to the is, is, and the is nots, and the reject or the fail to reject. We are failing to reject this, which means we can state our conclusion. If we were rejecting, this would have been our conclusion, but we're failing to reject. So this is our conclusion. There is insufficient evidence to suggest that the proportion of families eating together has decreased from 38%. There is insufficient evidence to suggest it has decreased. Uh, cool. So that is the uh, that is the process. Uh, and you can see once you get your head wrapped around it, it's a quick matter of typing in the correct the correct things, the correct things in StatCrunch, and coming up with your uh, your results and comparing your critical value to your test statistic, your level of significance to your p value, and letting everything else go from there. All right, so let's jump right in then to section 10.3, which is hypothesis tests for a population mean. Uh, you know what? No, it's only been five minutes. I'll, I'll continue on. I was going to say maybe I could stop this one. Um, but nope, I'm not going to keep on going. So how does, this, how does this process work differently? Well, it's dealing with population mean, the, the average. Not, not Star Trek versus Star Wars, but what is the weight of a penny? going back to that kind of thing. Um, and it's only minorly different. There's only just a little bit of, and it's not even really theory to talk to you about. It's just a different way of working through stuff. Do you remember the student's t-distribution? Um, we have to use student's t-distribution in this because a lot of times the sample sizes for means are, um, are small. So the shape of the curve is not the same as the normal. Well, that throws a wrench into things because it's a much different critical value. Critical value uses that little table, right, where it was 1.645 for a 0 0.05. Well, that's because the normal curve is very solidly fixed in place. Students' teacher distribution, uh, the curves are all different depending on the sample size, depending on your degrees of freedom, right? So we have to have uh, not a simple set of numbers in a small chart, but a larger chart. In fact, uh, you'll find this one, uh, and I, I sure hope, um, uh, I've got this. I sure hope that they have these kinds of, of charts nice and convenient for you. Um, but let me, let me bring this chart up here for you. Uh, you may be able to find this chart uh, in the uh, in Canvas that I uploaded, or maybe this is right, easily accessible within the question. 
But this chart right here uh, shows us all the different uh, degrees of freedom along with the area in that tail. And there are a whole bunch of areas that we have here, but look, here's the point one, here's the point zero five, here's the point zero one. If you want to take half of the five, you can find it here. If you want half of the one, you can find it here for the two tailed ideas. Um, but look for this one, look for the T distribution area in right tail. And if you're doing a left tail test, just make these things negative. Okay. Um, so let's, let me get out of this and then start our slideshow back up. So remember that, that we have, we have this, uh, let's say a sample was taken with N equals 10. What is the degrees of freedom then? 10 minus one is nine. Let's further say that a level of significance is of 0 0.05 is desired. Then what are our left tail, right tail, and two tail test numbers going to be? They're going to be a negative 1.833, a positive 1.833, and a plus or minus 2.262. Where did I get those? Next slide. I looked at, the, I zoomed in on this chart, right? And I can see that if I have a degrees of freedom of nine, and I have an area of 0 0.05, it's going to be 1.833 for a right tail, negative 1.833 for the left tail. And if it is a two-tailed, you need to take the area of 0 0.05, cut it in half to be 2.5%, and take uh, these boundaries as plus or minus. So that's why the 1.833 and the 2.262 show up on this previous slide, okay? So be able to use that table well. That's the only real difference that we have with the t-test. So here's an example um, of uh, the t-test for uh, population mean. According to the American Time News Survey, the typical American spends 138.7 minutes per day watching television. I don't know how old this stat is, um, but that's just over, what, just over two hours? That's, I don't know, probably not. Of course, maybe that's, we're using our phones more, whatever. Uh, do Americans spend more time watching television if they do not also use the internet? So the question is, is this number higher for non-internet users? If this is typical American, the typical American, some use internet, some don't. So let's zero in on those that don't. And let's ask ourselves the question, does this number, is this number significantly higher for non-internet users? Well, a survey was taken of 50 individuals who do not use the internet, and it resulted in a mean time of 151.8, which is higher, with a standard deviation of 50.5. So that those numbers must have been all over the place, right? So conduct the appropriate test to determine if non-internet users spend less, less, more, um, sorry, um, more time watching television. I'll have to fix that uh, typo, my bad. Um, so conduct the appropriate test to determine if they spend more time watching television than the average American. Okay, so what is this going to look like? Let me write some basic ideas down. Um, well, I'll, I'll remember them because uh, I've, I've got them in the slide. You can refer to them as well. We now have two types of test. Is this a one proportion Z? No, it's a one mean T test. That's a mean T test there, boy, I tell you what. Uh, the left tail, right tail, two tail. Well, the researcher is wondering do non-internet users spend more time? So we're looking at a right tail because it's going to be greater than the null, okay? So we've got um, one mean t test. How do I know it's one? Because there's only one stat that's been collected, right? How do I know it's mean? Because these were talking about the average time. How do I know it's t? Well, because t is used for mean and for small sample sizes, of which 50 is 
fairly small, right? So that's how I know it's one mean. I also know that it's right tail. Did I say 0 0.05? Yep, I'll get there, okay. What is the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis says it is the same. There's no difference between internet users or non-internet users or regular people. It's 138.7. That's it. The researcher says, hmm, I wonder, do you think that non-internet users watch TV more than average because they got nothing else to do? Our level of significance is alpha equals, again, 0 0.05. And let's see, we're going to use the table in the book to determine their critical value. And not a left tail, not a two tail, but a right tail. And we're going to use the degrees of freedom of 50 minus 1, which is 49. Interestingly, the table in the book doesn't show uh, degrees of freedom of 49. It goes 1 through 40 by individuals, and then it jumps by tens, and then it jumps by hundreds. Uh, but for all practical purposes, and especially when you're using um, the probability method and stat crunch, it all comes out in the wash. But we are going to use the closest one available to us. And that gives us a boundary based on degrees of freedom of 49, table said 50. Um, our critical value is 1.676. If our data shows a test statistic with a t-score of greater than 1.676, we're in the red zone, okay? All right, using technology, uh, and let me show you how to get there just in case. I want stat, this is a T stat, a T test, a one sample. There will be times when you have data, like maybe they give you 20 penny weights. Well, this is a summary again, right? So I'm gonna give the sample mean. Sample mean was 151.8, right? Um, oh, I don't remember. Yeah, 151.8. What was my standard deviation? Grr, I don't remember. I should have wrote it down. I know I should have. Uh, 50.5. Uh, 50.5. And what was my sample size? Was 50. What do I think it's, what is the null hypothesis? It should be 138.7. Um, and we want this to be a right tail. Let's make a graph. Let's compute it. And we can see what the picture and the data shows. Okay, so that's how you get to that. Let me jump back to this and we can see uh, we can see what we get. It looks like our test statistic. Um, test results. Our test statistic shows a T of 1.834276. And a p-value of 0 0.0363. Okay. Um, what's the probability of us getting this? It's only 3.6%, less than 4%. What was our alpha? Our red zone was 5%. We are clearly in the red zone. What was our boundary? 1.676. Are we further away from that? Yes. Yes, we are. 
So uh, we've written those down. And now what we can do is, um, I guess I need to uh, go on. Uh, classical method right there. The Z is outside the boundary. If it's outside the boundary, why is it way out there? It shouldn't be way out there, right? If it's out there, that's because our original hypothesis must be wrong. We're going to reject it. Likewise, the probability method says the p-value of 3.6% is less than our alpha of 5%. That allows us to reject this. So, which one? The is's or the is-nots? It is the is's that we get to keep. We found some statistically significant evidence that has brought about a change. Our thinking is no longer that everyone is a 138.7. Well, actually, everyone is, but if you further uh, look at just internet, non-internet users, we find out that it is higher than that. So what is our conclusion? Well, we're rejecting. That means there is sufficient evidence to suggest that non-internet users watch more television than the average American. Sweet. Whew. All right. So that's, uh, that's it. That is the, uh, that is the stuff. Uh, I'm sorry for, uh, for how long this stuff tends to be. I will say that the majority of chapters 11 and 12, um, a little bit less theory, right? And a little bit more practice in using the, uh, the stat crunch stuff. Sure, I'm thankful for, uh, for stat crunch. A lot of this makes it uh, uh, a, a fair bit easier. So, all right. That's all I got for you. Blessings to you.